With the Tuners DLC release in GTA Online, one of the newer features Rockstar added was these exotic cars that you can find throughout the map and you can deliver them to make, uh, you know, some money. Well, like typical Rockstar things, they don't explain anything. And honestly, if you were like me, the first couple of days trying to look for these things, you more than likely could not find them. So in this video, I am going to give you guys a guide to sort of help you out in finding all of these exotic cars. I'm going to show you guys all of the locations they can spawn, as well as something that you need to do to actually get them to spawn. Because in typical Rockstar fashion, yet again, Rockstar messed something up and there is a little button basically you have to press to get everything to work properly. So with that being said, if you have been struggling to figure out where these cars are, and to get them to spawn, well then this video is for you. Okay, so the first thing, how to get them to spawn and how to fix what Rockstar had broken. So if you've been trying to find them, they're not spawning for you, go into your interaction menu, go into the hide options menu, go into the other tab, and then make sure the air freight option is set to show. I don't know how that affects the car spawning, but if you have this air freight option set to hidden or hide, they're not gonna spawn in the world. These cars aren't gonna spawn. I, again, typical Rockstar blunder, but make sure that is set to show. That's like the first thing. If you don't have it set to show, it's not gonna work. The second thing, of course, is trying to find them. And the easiest way to do so, more than likely, is in a private session. An invite-only session, a close friend session, a close crew session, so solo public lobby, basically a lobby where other people aren't in it. And the reason is because you don't know if in a public session, if other people might take your car. And that's kind of maybe the issue if you've been trying to search for these cars in public sessions, maybe other people are taking them, who knows? So doing this in a session by yourself is definitely better. Now a third thing, you don't need this, but it makes life way easier. A vehicle that can go into the air. So the Oppressor Mark II comes to mind. I don't know, a Hydra, some sort of plane, a helicopter. Basically what we're gonna do is cover as much map as we possibly can. And that is much easier, of course, in air vehicles. It's gonna take you a lot longer if you're just on the ground in a regular car. Now, as for where to look, that's where the map's gonna come into play. So this is the map, and uh, I'll leave a link to an interactive map. It's gtaweb.eu. I don't know who made this website, but it's actually a very well-made website, and like it's got a bunch of stuff that's very useful. The things, of course, we're gonna look at are the, the group, or, or the exotic exports, but you can go in this guy's map and he has actually all the locations for all of the cars. But on the map we're seeing, of course, they're mostly considered, or they're mostly spawned around this city. So that is relatively good. There are a couple of spawns, of course, way up there in Plato Bay, up there in Sandy Shores, up there in Grapeseed. I guess just hope you don't have to go that far because it's gonna be annoying to drive all the way that far to the docks. The docks is where you do have to bring these cars eventually. But as you can see with this map, having a, an air vehicle is, is beneficial. Having a Hydra, I think that's probably the fastest one. That is, it's very beneficial because you can cover a lot of this ground a lot easier and a lot quicker. Now, before we get any further, the way this system works, because we're seeing this map here, this is a hundred different locations and that's what it is. There's a hundred different locations these cars can spawn. However, it's broken down actually into two groups. So according to fun here, he says it's 50 locations for a select few vehicles and then it's 50 locations for the other ones. And it, it may be hard to see, I'll just, you know, you can maybe zoom in somehow if you want, I don't know. This is the vehicles that spawn at uh, one set and then the other ones spawn another set. It's not really something I think you should pay too much note of unless there's like one fight, like you're at nine out of 10 and there's one vehicle you're trying to find. Maybe, you know, you might refer to this list, but actually going back to the map, this is that website I was mentioning here. And actually on this website, he actually did sort it by group one. And you can see that is, these are in a couple locations and then also group two or whatever, vice versa. And again, in different locations. So use these resources, like I said, if you really wanna specifically find a certain vehicle, but I think for the most part, just flying around the map is gonna be the best bet. 
Now, surprisingly, one of the good parts about this whole ordeal is you don't need to be right on the location to find them. You can actually be very far away. I mean, the first one I found, and I'll show some gameplay of that right now, I literally walked outside of my auto shop and the car was like four blocks away. Right? It was it was a decent ways away and it showed up. And you'll see that with the other ones that I did find when we're flying around, as long as you're relatively in the area, it will show up on the map. So that is, again, a benefit of having a flying vehicle. You can literally check off like a, a couple of these locations in one swoop by just flying in the general vicinity of those car locations. One thing I will say, however, about flying vehicles, make sure you're very careful because you do want to fly relatively low to the ground if you are super high up none of these things are going to spawn so you do have to fly relatively low to the ground and of course there's a bunch of trees power lines and stuff like that so make sure you're careful i did crash a couple of times because i'm sitting here looking at the map on my other screen my other monitor and then i crash into a mountain or i crash into a tree or something so definitely be careful of course but like i said it is good that you don't need to be right on the location for these vehicles to spawn now some other little tips that i think i kind of figured out these vehicles seem to be all parked like you're not tracing moving vehicles which of course is good also i do believe only one vehicle spawns at the same time i could be wrong but in my experience only one vehicle did spawn at, at a time so it does look like you might have to just one by one although the other little blue dot things like the kyle preco guards and the drug deals those can spawn at the same time as these blue dots because i actually ended up getting two blue dots and i was like wait i got two cars sweet and no just one turned out to be the drug deal so i guess this might help you searching for some of those other little events that happen like that and then the final thing that i kind of did just to test and see if it worked and it seemingly worked well for me was when I was going about 10, 15 minutes of flying around the city and not finding a vehicle, I just simply switched lobbies. And this can be done if you're trying to switch to an invite only lobby. You have to hit start and you go into the creator and then you can go, once you're in the creator, you hit start again, go into online and then make a new lobby. That is one way to do it. I mean, if you're kind of lazy like me, I just said, screw it. I'm gonna go see if I can find a vehicle in a public lobby and Actually, within like two minutes of me joining a public lobby, I found uh, one of my vehicles. So that's something you can do. But again, I would probably recommend staying away from public lobbies just because you just don't know uh, with people in there. But yeah, hopefully this video helps you guys out. I, if you were like me, again, you were struggling to find these vehicles and hopefully you do now know how to cross these vehicles off the list. Actually, the final thing, I didn't mention it in case you were wondering if it's even worth it. Um, well, eh, yes and no. If you're a new player, probably because they are fun. It is cool to go, you know, around, get these vehicles. But they do only pay $20,000. So you're doing all of this work for only $20,000 a pop. I don't think that's worth it if you're a, of course, veteran player. There are much easier ways to make money. I mean, it is cool to find these things, but I don't know if you necessarily need to go out and find them. Unless you want to complete the award that is there, there is an award to get all 10 in a single day. So 24 hours of real lifetime. But apart from that, I mean, it's probably not worth it. It does, the more you look at this DLC, it does seem like this is more for newer players. Players who don't have millions upon millions upon millions of dollars. But yeah, at the end of the day, you do only get $20,000 per car. And I do think there's a bonus if you deliver all 10. I think it's only like a 200k bonus. So I guess total, if you do all 10 in a day, you get $400,000. Again, is that worth it? More than likely, no. But I guess that's for you to determine. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully this video, hopefully this guide helps you out trying to find these exotic cars. And again, if you guys have any other information you want to share, any other little tips or anything, for sure, let us know in the comment section down below. Thank you guys. Please drop a video like if you did enjoy. Subscribe for more GTA content. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next one.